people don't know what the term vision impairment is. They just go, he has a stick, so he's blind. Mm -hmm. So they just assume you're a blind guy, you can't see anything, you don't have any residual vision. They just assume you just walk in darkness all day. So I think that's my time to shine and educate them. Like, I have some residual vision. I can't see you perfectly, but I can definitely hear you and feel your presence. So that's vision impairment. <laughs>
Any of us who can see the arrows could probably notice pretty quickly. So I try to give him that information as we go along just so he can adjust accordingly. I definitely hold on to her, her arm when we go up to the target to first scoring and then I she puts my hand onto the arrows and like these are your groupings and or this is how far off you are shooting. My fletchings are very different from other people's fletchings, uh, mainly because I have little, I call them dinosaurs. <laughs> the product is called Dragon Flights, and that's the easiest way for me to tell the difference between my arrows and someone else's, mainly because of the fletchings and also the diameter of my arrow. One of the qualities that I look for in a visual assistant is how well they can communicate with me, like describe if there's a rock on the road, shape of the rock maybe, like color of the rock, is it in my way, is it not in my way? Um, the second quality would be like, do you possess a driver's license? Because if you cannot drive, we can't go to competitions and practices together. I think, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, mainly because the mobility is a big factor for me in going to practices and tournaments. And maybe the third quality would be, if the person is willing to commit, are you only here to be a visual assistant for me because it's for a tournament that all your friends are going to and you just want to be there to support them? Or are you here for like the long run? I'm looking for a long-term partner and not someone who's only be only there to write down as an accolade like I did this like I'm, I'm not for that as a visual assistant one of my biggest challenges is to continue to be an advocate as a visual sighted person so one of the things that I find very difficult is being able to be in both worlds at the same time to understand his side to understand what him as a visual impaired person has to go through, that his life is different. The way, the habits he does, the way he lives life is gonna be at a different pace and a different techniques, different ways of life. And he'd be able to, to have deep empathy and deep understanding and then bring that, all those pieces into the world of visual sighted people who, for them, they have no reason to to even try to understand and trying to convey that and to show that like these two worlds should come together and being an advocate and an ally and to stand up for those moments where he gets overlooked. This is something that we could do together. This is something that a community has to do together and this could be a way that I participate and I volunteer myself to improve humanity. I think if someone's who's vision impaired and is uh, interested in shooting archery, don't be afraid to find a club or a range in your area. I know that it was a struggle for me at the, in the very beginning, but once you get into that comfort zone, you're gonna be making a lot of friends, you're gonna be part of a community, you won't be alone. Definitely you'll be a part of something bigger than what you already are.